And on this day, Rebels Creed is available for pre-order. Yes, in the links in the description down below, you can pick up the sequel to Breach of Peace, Rebels Creed. A full-length novel by yours truly. And very interestingly, yes, you can go into those links and pre-order the gorgeous scrumptious paperback or ebook wherever you choose but oddly enough you can't pre-order the paperback on amazon i wonder why this is the case amazon you could rather easily and quickly solve this issue this is don't take this as a threat nothing bad will happen if you don't properly list my book within 24 hours everything will be a-okay just just maybe by chance you should properly list the paperback of my book. That, that would be nice, I'd say. But without any further ado though, let's go ahead and jump into the fantasy news because we have a lot of it today and it's not all about the pre-order of my book, which you can go and link in the description and do right now. You can pre-order it. You can go pre-order it! That's coming in the near future. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into the fantasy news because as you know, it must flow. Did not mean to rhyme that, but it worked out great and I'm so excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green. And today we have a outstanding inhalation of fantasy news. And we're gonna go ahead and start that off with the fact that Steven Erickson has tweeted out, time to do some writing. And on his screenshot, we see Walk in Shadow, the third book in the Carcanas trilogy. Sorry, it took me a, a solid second to process that through my dyslexic gears. It's always exciting to see a legend of the fantasy genre get back to work, and we have more news about legends later on. Super late fantasy news cut in. Barney Harris is out as Matt Coffin, it seems, and the Wheel of Time show has recast Donal Finn, who you may know from The Witcher in a brief appearance he had, cursed or in upcoming love I have known. This obviously sucks. Like, there's no positive spin to put on this. Usually I try to find, like, some silver lining, but Barney Harris seemed to be a fan favorite before the show's even come out. A lot of people saying he was, like, the ideal Matt casting universally, and he's now not in the show. Uh, I've seen some people floating the idea of, like, are they gonna reshoot season one? I don't know for sure, but I would imagine absolutely not. Uh, it is far too late, like the show is about to drop, so that's not gonna happen. What we're probably going to see is Barney Harris season one and Donald Donal from there on out. No disrespect to this actor, I hope to see him give an amazing performance, but it's kind of a position where fans are probably going to really enjoy or hopefully really enjoy Barney Harris in season one, and then they'll have to make this adjustment for season two. We don't know why this has happened. It's it's just kind of this thing that I was just on Twitch and had to stop. I wish I could fill you in with more details here, but I really have none. All we know is that Barney is no longer a part of the show. This does happen though. It could be scheduling conflicts, personal slash family problems, who knows? So sucks, but this is the current situation. No resentment towards Barney Harris whatsoever. I got no idea what that guy's going on in his life. I just hope him and his are safe and good because it usually takes something pretty extraordinary to drop out of a major franchise like this. And I wish the best of luck to Donald who will be taking over the role and has a bit of an uphill battle in front of him. But that's the current situation, and I'd love to hear what you all think in the comments down below. Uh, this is something that's going to make the fans upset, and I really have nothing to add to be like, oh, it's fine, because I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of in this feeling of like, all right, what now? This isn't something we're going to have to like directly deal with, though, until season two is out in God knows how long from now. But until then, back to the fantasy news. 
But first, I want to talk about a new printing we're getting from the Broken Binding of the Dandelion Dynasty. This whole trilogy is being printed by the Broken Binding with a gorgeous design. I am obsessed with this, and this is what special editions should look like. They're doing lettered numbered ones. Wow. Like they're not paying me to cover this in any way, shape and form. Yes, I've worked with them before, but I wouldn't be covering it. Seriously would not if I didn't love these versions, but they are outstanding. I haven't read this trilogy, but it certainly put it on my radar and Good Lord, I just wanna say it's cool to see a small business that's coming up in this industry have something like this under their belt and they should be very, very proud of it. And ending the special edition news, we also had one for Dune again dropping because it seems everyone is trying to milk the Dune success as much as possible. So now we are getting this one that will only be available in the UK. And the last time that I covered something that was only going to be available in the UK, I got several comments from people who were saying like, why would you then cover it? You realize YouTube's available outside of the United States, right? A good percentage of my audience, roughly 20%, is not in the US. I just, I wanna make that clear. The internet exists in other lands, far away mystical places where they drink more tea than coffee. <laughs> But let's go ahead and talk about the initial responses to Dune. And I actually want to have a larger conversation about review as a whole here. That's going to slip into an angry rant that I'll try and keep it to the chest. Because we had the initial box office returns for Dune, which are looking pretty promising, though whether or not those will hold up and continue is up for debate depending on the wider world conditions, putting it nicely. But there's also been some controversy around the early reviews versus the later on ones and why they seem to reflect so differently differently, and I've seen people arguing online like, no, Dune's good, no, it's bad, it's just hype. Th this is art. For what I'm about to argue about, I'm specifically referring to people who have not seen Dune, who are trying to then judge the movie based off the early reviews they're seeing online. I wanna clarify that, because that's specifically what I'm talking about here. Let me just say, it's good or bad to the individual, and what I recommend you do, especially especially for early reviews, is find a reviewer you trust and stick with them. Someone who you know how their taste aligns or doesn't with your own. Because with early reviews, you often see the most exaggerated to one side or the other for clicks. Early reviews are very much so dependent on, I want your eyes. That's why I'm doing it early. And so when you get a lot of very polarized early reviews, that's pretty normal. And they are often exaggerated. Yeah, so for early reviews, find one you trust and stick with them. I'm only saying this because there were early reviews that were like, Dune's an absolute travesty and horrible, or it's the greatest thing of all time. How about it's art and you should interpret based on other reviewers who you know and trust whether or not it's something that interests you because those headlines are clickbait. Thank you, goodbye. I just say this because after I, specifically following a couple reviewers I like, tweeted out like, oh look, the people I generally follow are liking it and I'm excited. I had a bunch of people sending me a review from someone who was just some journalist who I, from what I could tell, hadn't done many movie reviews before who said it was bad. And I was like, okay, this guy thinks it's bad, why should I give a shit about this guy? He's just some dude. That's, that's it. <laughs> it's just, it's something I've talked about several times here on the channel in terms of how you should look at review. And it's not something where you should just find random headlines online and just go, oh, okay, this is the actual case because you don't know the person behind the article. What a lot of people seem to forget is there is an individual, a human writing the review and you're just getting their thoughts. Just because it's on a website doesn't mean it's factual. Of course, I'm looking forward to the people who are going to misrepresent this argument and say down in the comments section, so you're saying the only reviews that matter are the critics that you respect? No, I'm saying this article that was sent to me several times was just written by someone who I didn't know. So I personally have no connection to their taste. And from the catalog I saw of their movie reviews, they hadn't done too many, and I largely didn't agree with them as a whole, so. Sending someone a review just because you disagree with opinion they're tweeting online is rather pointless and dumb because 
Again, it's just a review from someone who you probably don't know, because let's be honest, a lot of people don't take the time and effort to look into reviewers and find the ones they match, judging by various comment sections I've been involved with. Anyway, let's move on away from Dune and talk about the most exciting Lord of the Rings news for the show we have ever gotten, in my opinion. Yes, I'm more excited about this than the budget. And that is that apparently Howard Shore may be involved with the score in some capacity. Now, we don't know how much, we don't know how little, but talk are apparently happening to get the original composer for Lord of the Rings trilogy to at least try and influence the score of the show. And hell yes. In my personal opinion, Lord of the Rings trilogy has one of the greatest scores of all time, and so the idea of having Howard Shore come in to even just touch up the score for the show is outstanding, and I would be thrilled if this turns out to be the case. They have that gargantuan budget we've talked about time and time again. I would be paying Howard Shore kinda just as much as he wanted to be able to come in because it's surprising how much music can affect the end result of any kind of visual media. It is an immersive, important element to your senses, and I mean, just, just rewatch Lord of the Rings without the soundtrack. I'm sure someone online has that somewhere, and it will be a jarringly different experience. The opening scene with the Shire without the music would just be a lot of, a lot of this. That wasn't nearly as whimsical and magical, was it? We also got a trailer for Finch starring Tom Hanks coming to Apple TV Plus. And I, God damn it, that name, Apple TV, just can't call it Apple TV because that's what you called the hardware and it's just annoying they have to call it Apple TV Plus, but whatever. But a sci-fi story with Tom Hanks attached, consider me interested and the trailer definitely had me tantalized as well, so I'm hooked. And speaking of awesome people being involved with sci-fi fantasy, we also had a trailer for Nightmare Alley, the latest endeavor for Guillermo del Toro with the likes of Kate Blanchett, Michael Fassbender, and many other notable names attached, and with some extremely interesting visuals that for some reason just kept making me think of something wicked this way comes, I'll be checking this one out too. But moving back into video game news, I want to touch on the fact that Neil Druckerman from Naughty Dog, someone who is largely responsible for The Last of Us, one of the most, you know, critically acclaimed video games ever, has apparently been added as a director credit to the upcoming Last of Us show. That means the creative head of this game will be actually doing his live action directorial debut with this show. I don't think HBO would just be handing this guy reins and be like, go with it. It's probably gonna be more as a co-director slot, especially because there's a lot of other directors and producers in line and attached to this. And also when it comes to Hollywood, sometimes people get various credits to just increase their financial financial return and they just want to be credited with these things for their resume, but I'm not saying this person will not actually be directing. They probably will be. There's just also a lot of politics when it comes to shows like this and how people get credited in various ways. That's something I learned very quick once I started talking to people who work in this industry. This is just a positive though, because with these credits does come more sway and control. And while this guy may not be the most experienced in terms of actually sitting in the director's chair, he is definitely the most experienced when it comes to capturing and enhancing and controlling the themes, the tone, the characters of this story. So I actually just like seeing that HBO is getting a lot of the core creatives that originally put out the game involved in their live action show, and it shows respect for the medium of video game that I think it often does not get. So for me, this is a positive, though if you're one of the people who sits more in the negative camp, let me know why in the comments down below. I'm always open to the other side of things. I don't think I'm necessarily right. I just think there's pros and cons, and the pros outweigh the cons for me here. And I also, you know, hope the guy has a thriving future career in directing live action if this goes well for him. Neat. And in a last minute fantasy news cut in, we also had Brandon Sanderson tweeting out a link to pre-order his new novella, Sunreach, taking place in the Skyward universe. This is going to be written by Brandon Sanderson and Jancy Patterson, or already was written, not as going to be unless they are about to book it, and was read by Jancy Patterson. So go ahead and check that out as well in the links down below. But in the final story of the day, a recent rant of mine about One Piece went a little bit viral, I guess is the term I'll use, by getting posted onto the One Piece subreddit. And I just wanted to say thank you to the One Piece community for continuing to be one of the most welcoming communities I have ever encountered in my history of review. It's been genuinely like, 
awesome to have so many people just be excited to see someone who generally reads traditional fantasy be stepping into manga and One Piece. And there was one comment in particular that hit on they feel like these two, you know, mediums and storytelling avenues have been long waiting for this emergence and they said seeing people like Murph and I talk about the franchise they love meant a lot to them and I just want to say like back at you getting involved in this and being a part of seeing a lot of Wheel of Time fans pick up One Piece and One Piece fans pick up other fantasy franchises I've promoted is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time like I always love giving books to people to recommend but the idea that I'm starting someone's entire manga journey or taking someone who only reads manga and starting their Cosmere Wheel of time Lord of the Rings journey is so cool warmed my heart and I just wanted to end this fantasy news by saying I love y'all and I appreciate the conversation as always because that's what I try and promote here and speaking of things I try to promote that's one hell of a transition Rebels Creed is available for pre-order everywhere in paperback and ebook some places for some reason don't have the cover image up yet I can't control that I hand it off to a distributor and they do their best and Amazon remember your Kindle will be fine no matter what just would really appreciate if you know you listed my book properly for paperback pre-order. Be great, you know? Nothing will happen to your Kindle. <laughs> like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what... <laughs> if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.